L.A., baby. Hollywood, right? You know what they got in Hollywood besides actors? Really expensive real estate. So how does a regular guy start a real estate portfolio? Get cash flow. Let's talk. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. LA investors, if I told you you can get three grand in rent, three grand in rent, for like $34,000 out of your pocket, would that explode your brain? There are markets in the United States where you can do that, and I help you guys invest in those, right? And today I'm helping a guy named JJ understand that market, right? JJ, you and I, we're doing a flip together in a B-grade suburb of the Cleveland area that's underway. In addition, you wanted some videos on some other properties that I thought made sense for you as you expand your business into rental property ownership, right? You're raising funds, right? You're finding private investors and raising funds, right? So you got a private partner, you're handling that flip, you wanted some info on some other stuff, right? And you were focused a lot on some multifamilies and possibly some single family rentals for long-term investments in and around certain areas of Cleveland. And you wanted my feedback on that plan, which I think it's a fine plan, but I think that plan had a hole. I think that plan had a major hole in it, okay? And that major hole in it was you were focused only on a very small geographic area right around some areas in Cleveland, which are fine. And, you know, we're going to analyze and look at properties in and around that area for you. But I don't want you to close your mind off to other areas, right? So what I have for you today is a deal that I think is really good. I think this is a really good deal. It's in an area called Elyria, which is about a half hour west. You've probably never heard of it because you're from L.A., when you're in L.A., you hear about Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. You think Cleveland's the only thing. It's not. There's like three or four million people in the Cleveland area. But only like 350,000 of them live in an actual city of Cleveland address, right? So this is something that's probably off your radar, and I thought it made sense for you to see. In addition to showing you the investment, J.J., I'm going to talk to you about everything that's wrong with the investment property, right? Because as you start to learn about new markets and new strategies, I think it's important, especially for you, because you're going out there and you're raising funds from other private investors. It's especially important for you to become an expert in the whole Cleveland market if that's where you're going to be uh, focusing on and raising funds for all these passive investors, right? So what I'm going to do now is show you this property that I like, and it's an amazing strategy, right? The strategy is essentially buying the crappiest house in the nicest neighborhood, which is way better than buying the nicest house in the crappiest neighborhood, right? So what I'm going to do is highlight every single thing I think is wrong with this property, but still explain to you why I still think it's a good investment, right? Because there's other investments priced like this in the Cleveland market that are bad investments, and we could talk about those in future videos. But this one happens to be a really good one. But there are a lot of red flags on this property that could scare away potential investors. But I'm here to explain all of them to you and explain the give-take relationship with issues like this and scoring properties that rent for three k a month but only require a $34,000 investment. Let's jump in. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. This is where I make, I earn the money, right? You make the money. I earn it. This is where I earn my fee, okay? I'm going to give you the most uncensored, unrestricted, unbiased take on these investment properties. 1004 West Ave, Elyria, 44035, $135,000 spent on the market 30 days. Now, that's a little misleading. It was on the market and then immediately got sold or put under contract, I should say. It has just fallen out of contract. We will probably be in multiple offers because this is cheap. 
135000 for a four-unit building, right? It's technically like two duplexes, same lot, okay? Now, here's the thing. A lot of you are watching this from out of state. You have to understand, looking at the Cleveland market with out-of-state eyes, everything seems cheap. But you got to understand why things are cheap, this or that. What you need to understand is when you're dealing with neighborhoods that are like of C-ish quality, which is what this neighborhood is, you're typically looking at paying about $200,000 for an investment property like this, okay? two hundred k. Why is this one so cheap? What's going on with it, right? We got to figure that out, right? Is it just this screamer of a deal? What's going on, right? Here are the current rents. 500, 500, 675, 800. Looks good. Those are not even the market rents. That's keeping the price down as well, right? That keeps the price down a little bit, okay? The market rents should be 650, 650, 850, 850. So $3,000 or 36K a year. Now, with that 36K, folks, you don't get to keep it all, right? I anticipate spending almost $17,000 having my team run this for you, right? You got RPM fees, lawn care, water, sewer, the tenants pay the other utilities, insurance, taxes, vacancy, non-payment, all that jazz, right? So a true profit is about $19,258. You buy it at $135K, you put down $33,750, bank kicks in $101,000. That would pencil out to a 42% cash on cash return, right? That's insane, okay? That is insane. But are we really there today? No, we're not there today, right? There's a few gotchas here, okay? You got all those tenants who are paying much lower rents, all right? So the process of getting them up to that $3,000 a month in rent Will it be done without any turnovers? I don't know, right? The property's still going to cash flow like a mother with the current rents, right? So you want to slowly work that uh, up to that, right? Slowly increasing the rents because you don't want to create turnovers, right? Because if you create turnovers, this unit where we got some person living here, we're going to have to redo this unit, right? Like the floors look fine, but that carpet, probably going to have to do something to that carpet, right? It looks cool right now, but when they move out, it's probably gross, right? This unit, right? You got this like old wood paneling and you got a drop ceiling, okay? These are reasons why it's priced so cheap. This is why it's not 200 k right? This, it's obviously dated. Next tenant, not a big deal. We're going to repaint it, right? We want to go with like a gray or a white. But this right here, the drop ceiling, you know what that probably means? That probably means there's some type of water damage above this unit, and the landlord just slapped that up there to cover it up, didn't want to do the job the right way. So you have to understand. Yeah, we could pick this up for 135k. Yeah, the amount of money we're eventually going to get is insane. But there is a reason it is $65,000 discounted. And this right here is probably why, right? So I'm sure we're going to need to do a roof if I had to guesstimate within the next few years, right? Roofs, they last about 30 years. A roof on a big old property like this, you got two of them, two of them, right? About 7 Gs a piece, okay? I'm sure there's no new roofs, okay? See, more drop ceiling, right? Drop ceilings, if they're not in a basement, are usually a bad sign. With everything in life, everything in real estate, you got to take the good with the bad. Does it mean like, oh my God, they covered up a leak with a drop ceiling. It's a scam. I can't do the deal. No, that's not what it means, folks. But at the same time, when the property is 135, and all the other properties like this should be 200. That also doesn't mean, oh my God, I'm gonna make 65 grand the day I buy it. It's so much cheaper, right? There's give and take. There's reasons for this, right? And I am here to help you figure out what those reasons are. Side note, that is a lot of toothbrushes, okay? Woo, we got a lot of toothbrushes, right? More stuff, more stuff. Uh, here's another red flag that I see, which again, doesn't mean don't buy it. Still a gnarly investment, but you have to understand why it's so cheap, right? You see this? This is your electrical, okay, light switch. You see on the outside of the wall going to that light, right? They did it on the outside. They didn't put it on the inside, right? They rewired that, did it on the outside. What that shows me, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's to code. But what that shows me is you got a previous owner who's wanted to take the cheap way to do things, right? It's cheaper and easier and quicker to put it outside the wall to go to that light fixture than to put it inside the wall. So these are just like things we have to look at, red flags we have to see when we're buying investment properties that show us like, okay, 
when I get the inspection report back, there's going to be a lot of stuff that was kind of slapped together. Again, reasons for your $135,000 price point, right? You see the basement here, right? Old basement, 100 years old, right? Looks like that's kind of sagging a little bit. Do I think the house is going to fall apart? No. Is this a nice dry basement? No. Okay, is this like beautiful? Would we want to see something like this today? No, but you have to understand what you're getting. You are getting some newer mechanicals though, right? Both of these look to be under 10 years old, and furnaces typically last about 30 years, okay? But what you're getting is very old structures, folks. Incredibly old structures with some below market tenants, structures that are not in the greatest condition, right? You see this, right? You see that? That don't look great, okay? These are just things, right, that are not going to be perfect. So you have to understand when you go to buy this, there's a reason you're getting a $65,000 discount on this stuff, okay? Do I think these are the nicest properties ever? <laughs> absolutely not. Do I think they're great investments? I absolutely do. You don't want to buy the nicest house in the crappiest neighborhood. You want to buy the crappiest house in the nicest neighborhood. And that's what this is. This is a solid C-grade investment neighborhood. You're getting approximately 65 k off what it should cost to pick this up. In exchange for that, you're taking on a property that over the course of your ownership is going to need a lot of deferred maintenance. Uh to continue to operate it. Do you have to go in and do all the things I just mentioned like day one? No. Do I want you to go in and raise the rents up to $3,000 a month on day one? No, because your tenants would move out and then you have to redo their units, right? You want to keep those existing tenants in there as long as possible, handle safety concerns as they come up, uh, replace things like the roofs to do preventative maintenance for more water damage uh, I as soon as you can. That's something you probably want to do soon, but we'll know more exactly to how close to the end of life expectancy we are on those roofs after our home inspection. But all told, this is a great investment property. There are other four-unit apartment buildings in the Cleveland market for this price in F-grade neighborhoods. That's a whole different can of worms, right? The neighborhood being the thing that holds the price down. Here, the neighborhood brings the price up because it's a good solid rental market, but the condition of the house is what's holding it down, right? So that, folks, is real estate 101. You buy the crummiest house in the nicest neighborhood. This absolutely is that, which is why I said at the top of this analysis that this 30 days on the market is misleading. It just came back on the market, and it's going to fly. I presume what probably happened is you got a rookie investor who saw the crazy price point, put it under contract immediately. Then they got their inspection report back, and they're like, oh, my God, the house needs repairs. Obviously, the house needs repairs, folks. That's why it's a hundred thirty-five grand for three thousand dollars a month in rent show me a market in the united states of america where you can get solid c-class blue collar tenants paying three thousand dollars a month and you only got to come up with thirty three thousand dollars cash bank kicks and the rest it just doesn't happen okay so this is a solid deal but you need to know why it's priced so well Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.